Tell them you love them. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, worship team. That's the way I was taught to worship the Lord. Amen. With or without music, whether the people around me want to worship or not, I'm going to worship God. Amen. And that's, I believe, why you guys come on Friday, because you, hey, look, it doesn't have to be a Sunday. It doesn't have to be a conference. It's another Friday night that we come to honor and glorify God when we can be doing other things. Amen. This is our time to worship God. This is God's time. The world wants your time, wants your money at the restaurant, wants your money at the movies. The, the world wants to draw you away from him. But how many know his spirit draws us to him? And this is why we are here tonight. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. I hope that you are prepared this evening. Amen. If you would with me, grab your Bibles. We're going to look in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 58. I can't think of a better scripture that exemplifies what true fasting is. And tonight we're going to talk a little bit about fasting. Amen. And I pray that as we read this, you feel a particular calling upon your life. Because that's what, when you get close to God, that's what happens. You cannot get close to God and not feel the call. Just, I'm going to tell you right now. If you say, well, I've been praying. Have you really been praying? Because you cannot get close to God and not feel his call. That's just, a, that is a, 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 a spiritual law. When you get no, near God and you get near his presence, you can't help but to understand what his heart is. And that is for God's people. How many can agree with that tonight? Amen. Amen. And I'm going to read uh, out of the book of Isaiah chapter 58. We're going to be looking at verse 6. Amen. And just follow along with me. And the Lord says this, is not this the kind of fast I have chosen to loosen the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, the cords of the yoke. Man, that's one. Let's go on to loosen chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke to set the oppressed free and break every yoke. Is it not to share your food with the hungry? There's another calling in a ministry. And to provide the poor wanderer with shelter. Another calling in a ministry. When you see the naked to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood. Then you, your light will break forth like the dawn. And your healing will quickly appear. Some of you have been praying for healing tonight, amen. You've been praying for healing for all this month. And your righteousness will go before you. And the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. How many know that, that man, it, sometimes the world loves to put fear out there so you can go get a second job because you're worried about those finances. The world puts fear in you that you're not going to have enough. So you scramble around in the arm of the flesh to get what you need because you don't know if tomorrow's taken care of. But we forget God is already in tomorrow. Amen. God, God has already tomorrow taken care of. Amen. Let's go read on. Then in verse 9 it says, Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and he will say, Here I am. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing, uh, the pointing finger and malicious talk, and if you spend yourselves, if you spend yourselves in, in behalf of the hungry and satisfy the need of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your light will become like the noonday. And the noonday is symbolic of the brightest light during the, the day. You and I will become that brightest light. The world sh shows itself like it is the answer or has the answer. But as Pastor Rick has been talking about how, how we, need to un, we need to allow the Lord to unleash his kingdom, because his kingdom it was what brings understanding. And remember, his word is what brings understanding. And that's what the, when the Bible talks about light and the noonday and the highest and the brightest light, that means the best understanding, God's understanding. Amen. Let's keep on reading. Verse 11. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your need in sun scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well watered garden. Wow, that was what I want to be like a spring whose water never fails. Your people will rebuild the ancient ruins. Remember, we're talking about a fast that God is describing and will raise up the old age 
uh, raise up the old age foundations, you will be called the repairer of the broken walls, re restorer of streets with dwellings. That's it. Man, it, just that alone says, but I think we need to fast. <laughs> Doesn't it? Amen. Amen. And I know some of you do fast because we talk about it. But then there are some of those I told you, I talked about fasting. They're like, man, I haven't fasted in a long time. Years, some people. And I think, wow, you come to this church? And I think, man, have we been teaching about fasting and praying like we should? But that's why we're here tonight. Amen. Let's bow our head and close our eyes. Heavenly Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. We thank you for your power and your might, God. I pray, Lord God, that you would help us tonight, God, to look into your word, Lord God, and to understand that it is you that has called us, God. And there is a tremendous calling upon your people, and it is your anointing that will take over tonight, God. I pray, Lord, that your word will bring revelation and insight, Lord God, to what your calling is for our lives, God. And I pray that, Lord God, as we pray, as we fast, as we unite together, my God, that we would experience power and demonstration, Lord God, of your Holy Spirit against the enemy, Lord God, and that we would watch him flee. God, I pray that you would answer prayer tonight, God, as well, Lord God, as bring healing as your word comes forth. God, I pray that you would be glorified, God, and everything else would fade in comparison to you. Help me tonight to communicate your word, Lord God, as we lift you up together and as we listen intently to gain understanding tonight. We love you and we ask this in Jesus' name. We all say... Amen. You may have your seats. Thank you for standing with me for such a period of time. I appreciate it. And it is always an honor and a privilege to come and share God's word. So I pray that just that alone, as you go home and you study that, that it's going to compel you to say, God, let me fast and let me pray so that I can be, be like what the word of God describes. Amen. So we're talking about fasting, and I've entitled this message, The Weapon of Fasting, amen? Because it is a weapon. And Pastor Gerald, when he preached on Sunday, he talked about the worship team being weaponized, right? Because you only know you can have a worship team, right? You can have a nice Lamborghini. How many know what a Lamborghini is, right? You can have a nice Lamborghini, but you weaponize a car, and then you think you're like 007 or Inspector Gadget, right? Uh, you know, or, or you have a pen. Instead of a pen, it's a what? It's a knife or a gun, right? You weaponize something, now its use has increased. How many would agree with that? Amen? So he talked about weaponizing the worship team, and we here experience uh, time with God, and we experience the anointing of God when the worship team comes and, and, and worships the Lord, and we come together. But how many know that when you're at home or when you're at work or when you're by yourself, sometimes you're like, I want to go back to church to experience that when, when, when you can experience it right there in your very own home. But it takes time for us to deny this flesh and get a hold of God, get on our knees, right? Get off our phone, get on our knees. Get off our TV, get on our knees. Get off our tablet, get on our knees. Get off of self and get on our knees. We used to have a term for when people had knees that were real rough. We used to call it camel knees. How many, how many got camel knees today, amen? Right? The weapon of fasting. When you talk about a weapon, you think of immediately maybe a gun or a knife, right? Or anything that we can use or grab, right? Like can you, you can use this mic stand as a weapon, right? If you grab the mic stand and I approach you really fast, what do you think? Like, oh, hey, don't, please don't hit me, Brother Tim, right? But a weapons that most of us know are used to obtain a particular objective. That weapon is to either intimidate or say, hey, I'm coming through, let me on by. If I walk through with a 38 Special on my side, are you going to let me on by? If I walk through with a machete, are you going to let me through, right? And you will because your perception of a weapon is that it can do harm. But a weapon can also do a lot of good. And when a weapon is used not to intimidate or to empower for people that have a false understanding that a weapon is used to intimidate but used as a tool. So I want to encourage you, in God's word, God is describing the tool or the weapon of fasting to break the yoke of bondage, a spiritual yoke. Because if we trust in our, the arm of the flesh, what do we get? Flesh. The Bible says that flesh begets flesh, right? And I don't want, I don't want to be able to, to go to heaven and say, hey, God, you know, I did all that I can, but in my own flesh, because then that's all I'm going to get is like, great, that's a good job. I want to be able to tap into the supernatural. 
I want to be able to ask the Lord to help me with certain issues and conditions in my life that only God can break. Only the Holy Spirit can break. And so when the Lord, when the Lord uses the description in here in Isaiah 58, and I encourage you to study it, it talks about right there in chapter 58, verse 8, then your light will break forth like the dawn, right? When does the dawn come? The dawn comes every 24 hours. When that dawn, when that sun begins to rise in the east and you look at it, you know there is hope for a new day. There's a new canvas that you can write and, 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 and you, can, you, can, you can dictate what happens in your day. How many would love to take yesterday away? You know, like, man, if I could erase tomorrow. Well, look, at tomorrow's gone. It is gone. In the eyes of God, in the presence of Almighty God, there is no yesterday. There's only what's, what's in front of us. And that's when the Bible talks about a new dawn. That's what getting in the presence of Almighty God does. That's what when you get on your knees, when you deny yourself of what you want. Because remember, fasting is not about the food. Fasting is not about the act of denying yourself food. It's the act of saying, flesh, you are no longer in control, but God, you're in control because there is a calling upon my life, because there is a future that I know I have a part of, not just within this church, but within my family, within my job, wherever I go, whether I'm on social media, whether I'm telling somebody about the Lord at the bus stop or on the sidewalk or there in the store in the line, I know, God, that you have a plan and a calling for my life, but that will not be a achieve in the supernatural if I continue to trust in this flesh. We have to trust in God's power and that's only going to come if we allow the Lord to use us as a conduit, as a vessel of honor the Bible talks about. The Bible talks about vessels of gold and of silver. Then he mentions uh, vessels of wood and clay. I don't want to be like wood and clay because those perish. But how many know gold and silver are valuable to accomplish a purpose? They have value. Do you have value? Do you have value? I talk to a lot of people about prayer. And a lot of times they're dealing with emotions. Like, oh, I feel like this. I feel like that. Okay. Well, so do I. Right? So do they. So does pastor. But what do we do about it? We continue to deny what we want to do and just come. We continue to put that key in that car and turn that car on and keep coming to this address. We keep going to where God wants to send us because it is his anointing that compels us. And then when you get here and then you, you start to like, man, what am I doing here? And then God starts to minister you because you've been praying and you've been fasting. When the Lord talks about many things in the Bible, it just doesn't mean, you know, read my Bible and then everything's going to be okay. He gives you a strategy. And in the Bible, the Lord uses many people. He uses Moses. He uses Jesus. He used the Apostle Paul. He used Ezra. He used Nehemiah. He used many, many, many men of, and women in the Bible who fasted and they seen a great result. Going back to the weapons. Remember, we're talking about a great result. Why do we fast? Because we want results. We don't fast just to fast. It's not a ritual. In the Bible, there were some fasts that took place that were rituals. Don't get confused. Amen. We don't fast out of ritual. We fast with purpose. We fast to deny this flesh and do what God wants us to do. How many can say amen? amen. We're talking about a weapon. I want to encourage you to use the weapon of fasting as, as an intended tool to combat and build something against the enemy. I want to encourage you to understand that a weapon can also bring a feeling of security, right? If you're walking into a dangerous place and, and, and you see that, look, man, that's a, probably a dangerous place or situation, but then you say, hey, bro, here, and they give you a strap, right? And you're going to go over there and you're like, oh, I feel a little bit better. I got my strap going on, right? And many of you may have heard the phrase that Stonewall Jackson, a general back in the, I think it was in the Civil War, I'm not sure. But he said this, he said that a man should feel just as safe on the battlefield as he does in his own bed if God is his Lord. That's what he said. Stonewall Jackson went into battle riding in front of his army with his sword drawn. And he, time after time after time after time and again, he led people as a general. He didn't follow behind. He led. So there's a a certain understanding that comes when we fast and when we pray. 
There's a spiritual and, and, and supernatural understanding that comes when we get a hold of God and we decide to tell ourselves, I'm not going to eat that today, but I'm going to do what God wants me to do. And I'm going to spend a little bit more time praying. How many times when you don't eat, let's just say you're not fasting, but you forget to eat breakfast. Does your body remind you that you're hungry? Yes, it does, right? Does your, by, by the time lunch comes around or dinner comes around, your stomach starts to talk to you, right? Well, you need to remind yourself, that little hunger, whatever, that reminds you, hey, wait a minute, there's a reason why I'm fasting. There's a reason why I'm not eating. It's because there are people in this world that are all messed up. There are individuals in my family, in your family, that need a message of hope. There is a reason why we do what we do, and it's time to make a difference. It is time to do something because our children are important. Our disciples are important. There's many individuals whose lives are important. They're not here today, amen, but how many know that they will be here? Eh? They are coming because you and I are going to fast and we're going to pray and we're going to watch God do the supernatural. I might not be able to reach all of them, but I will tell you that the Holy Spirit will be able to reach all of them regardless of what I'm going to do. But I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to do my best and hit these altars. I'm going to hit those altars at my house and I'm going to pray and I'm going to fast and I'm going to watch God do a supernatural miracle. How many are with me tonight? When Moses fasted, Moses fasted before the Lord and received the, the, the laws of God. Millions of people are affected today because of what was written on that day. He fasted 40 days. Elisha fasted, right? Many of you remember the story of Elisha where he battled 450 prophets of Baal by himself. Right. He said, call those 450. But as I was reading, it, he also said, call those 450 and call the other 400 of the God of Asherus and have them come too." he called out 850 prophets. And he said, watch my God do a supernatural work. And God got the victory on that day. But what did he do? He fasted for 40 days. Well, some people say, well, that was back in the day. The days haven't changed. It's still 24 hours. God hasn't changed according to his word. He says that he is, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if God sustained their bodies then, God will sustain our bodies now. But sometimes people say, well, you know, I can only fast a certain way because of my body. Your body is giving, when you give it to God, it is no longer your body. It is an instrument, a tool, and a weapon in the hand of Almighty God. He'll transform your body to do exactly what he wants it to do. So we got to start, stop thinking in the carnal and allow God to put in our spirit what that plan, what that purpose, and what that calling is. We look at the story of Adam and Eve. Because you want to know history a little bit about fasting, right? Adam and Eve were in the garden. And God told them, you can have everything here in the garden. But except that. Except that one tree. That's mine. You can't do it. They had everything. Every, man, can you imagine that the garden was beautiful? Can you imagine that the animals were there? Can you imagine the trees were green and they were probably tall? And a cool breeze came and it was such a blessing. But they were drawn to the one thing that, that God said they couldn't have. Right? Isn't that like us? Man, I can have this, I can do it, but I want that. And so what happened? What Eve did, she went over, she walked toward the tree, or wherever it was, and she grabbed it, and she said, oh, man, this is cool. And then she offered it to Adam, right? And then it was crazy. A lot of people don't realize this, because you don't hear this a lot. But who had dominion over the earth at that time? Who called the Adam, right? So when Adam bit into the fruit, there was a transference of authority and power from him to Satan. That's crazy, right? When we decide to do what God wants us to do, we walk with authority and with power. But when we decide to do what the flesh wants to do, there's a transference of the authority and the power into the hands of Satan, and then you become his puppet. It's very important to understand that when God is explaining things in the word of God, as you study it in its original languages in Greek and in Hebrew, and you study the history of when, what went on, and you, you just don't read for a few moments, but you study, and you look at the reference scriptures, and you look at this. When I was reading about fasting, I was like, man, it's not about food. It's about the understanding. There's a calling. There is a power that, man, some of us have not even tapped into. And we're waiting and we're waiting and we come and we cry and we have an emotional experience. 
But I want to encourage you to have an experience on the corner of 9th and Mount View, the corner of 9th and Mount Vernon, the corner of Baseline and Waterman. I want to encourage you to ask God to give you the boldness and the power and the authority to go over there and do like Jesus and call demons by name and tell them to go and, and they don't come back. It's not just here where we're supposed to experience the power and the might of God. This is very, we only spend a few hours here a week, amen. How many know that time that we're at work? But we need to pray for people and watch them get healed right there in that break room. It can happen. It has happened. And it will happen if we continue to do what God has called us to do. Fasting. Fasting. Moses, when he fasted, it was on a mountaintop. The Bible says that he didn't even drink water. Sometimes we're like, well, yeah, he went on a water fast. He didn't go on a water fast. He went on an absolute zero, nothing. Holy Spirit. Oh, that's good, right? When Elisha fasted, the Bible says that he went into a cave after his battle with the prophets. And the Bible says he got weary and God went to look for him. Stand with me. God went to look for Elijah. The Bible says that he was in a cave and the Lord passed by. There's a song, I don't know if you ever heard of it, it's called Kumbaya. Right? And sometimes we refer to that song, you know, this is not just Kumbaya. I've heard it many times. I've said it before myself. But when you look in that, the meaning of Kumbaya, come by here, my Lord, that's what it means. Come by here, my Lord. If God is with you, nothing can be against you. If God is with you, nothing can touch your children. If God is with you, nothing can touch our church. If God is with you, nothing can touch your calling. If God is with you, nothing can touch your mind or your heart and your soul. But it's the denial of this flesh that will bring out that supernatural man or woman of God that God has intended for you to be. Like the Bible says, he knew you in your mother's womb. He knew you before the beginning of time. Unfortunately, sometimes we just take two steps forward and three steps back because we forget that this flesh is not in control. We forget that God is in control. When God went after Elisha, the Bible says that Elisha really didn't know what to do. He wanted to die, it says, even after his great victory. But the Lord sent an angel and the angel made him some cakes. And then the Bible says that those cakes sustained him for 40 days. He fasted also for 40 days. And then after those, after fasting, the king came and, and talked to him. And then the king was going to go somewhere. And Elisha said, I'm going to go there too. And the Bible says that he ran ahead of the king. And the king was on his horses. And Elisha got there before the king. There was a supernatural influence on his physical body. And sometimes when we, we don't study God's word and we just say, let's fast, let's water fast. Ooh, right? Oh, let's, we want to see, ooh, we want to see somebody jump out of a wheelchair. We want to see some whole family saved. When Jesus fasted 40 days, he commanded the devil to flee and he left. Sometimes we're like, devil, get out of here. But then we start watching TV, listening to worldly music, watching movies we ain't we're supposed to watch. Devil, get out of here. Oh, wait, wait, little, stay right there. Let me watch. This. Sometimes we forget that God is about righteousness. But that's what fasting do. It reminds us that God is in control and we're not. Jesus told the demon, he, he told it, it was a deaf and dumb spirit. He said, deaf and dumb spirit, get out and don't come back. That's what he told the, the, the devil. He said, don't come back. And then the disciples secretly went to him on the side and he said, Jesus, how come we couldn't cast this out? And what did Jesus say? Some of you know, he said, this kind can only come out through prayer and fasting. So what, so, what, so what is God's word saying? Is that there is a consistent spiritual strategy among those who want to hear from God, who want to see results. It's time to put our flesh under subjection. Remember, it is not in the act of not eating. It is the act of listening. It is the act of by faith. It is the act of obedience. It is the, the act of understanding that knowing it is not us, but God. That when he does it, the world is changed. That when God does it, miracles take place. That when God does it, families, whole entire families, generations are saved. When God does it, the world does not recognize who is in front of him anymore. Because God has a plan for each and every one of us. You and I as individuals are are you with me tonight? 
How many want to do something about what the devil's been doing to this world and come in between it? When the devil comes in, the Bible says like a flood, the Lord will lift up a standard against them. You're that standard. You present the message of hope and the power of the blood of Jesus because you know God's word. And it's like, I'm going to do something about what with God has given me. I want to encourage you tonight to stop just looking to the hills and saying, I know where my strength comes from. Start to climb that hill and go where God is. And you will watch God meet you supernaturally and watch him do a supernatural work. It's time to see some change. Personally, within each and every one of us, we're all guilty. Amen. Because we're just, we're in this flesh. But this is your time. Get a hold of God's word. Study it. What does it say about fasting and praying? And, and, and man, just get into it. And then when people start talking about God's word, you'll be like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Oh, man, let's talk about it. I used to do that in the home all the time. I still like, oh, what are you guys talking about? My wife comes home from the convention. What do they talk about? Because it's inside of you. The Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to encourage you to pray and fast. Use your weapon well. Let's bow our head and close our eyes. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. We thank you, God, for allowing us to understand that, Lord, the understanding is in your word, God. We thank you because you bring clarity, God. You help us to know, God, Lord, that you will never leave us nor forsake us, God. But we have to do our...